Good morning. Would you stand and join me in singing more about Jesus? Would you stand, please? If you want to use a book, it's hymn 600. More about Jesus would I know More of His grace to others show More of His saving fullness see More of His love who died for me More, more about Jesus more, more about Jesus, more of His saving fullness see, more of His love who died for me. More about Jesus, let me learn, more of His holy will discern, Spirit of God my teacher be, showing the things of Christ to me. More, more about Jesus, more, more about Jesus, more of His saving fullness, more of His love who died for me. More about Jesus in His Word, holding communion with my Lord, hearing His voice in every line, making each faithful saying mine. More, more, more about Jesus more, more about Jesus, more of His saving fullness see, more of His love who died for me, more about Jesus on His throne, riches in glory all His own. More of His kingdom sure increase, more of His coming Prince of Peace. More, more about Jesus, more, more about Jesus, more of His saving fullness see, more of love who died for me. Thank you. You may be seated. Well, good morning, Griffin. Good morning. It is so good to see all of you here in the house of the Lord on this beautiful Lord's Day. The Bible says this is the day in which the Lord hath made. We're to rejoice and be glad in it. I want to welcome all of you here this morning and those by internet. We're so glad that you tuned in as well. And we're praying that God will bless all of us on this day. And if there's somebody here that doesn't know Jesus Christ in a real and personal way, my prayer is that this is the day of salvation uh, for them. If you happen to be a guest of ours, you're not just a visitor, you are a guest of Griffin Baptist Church, and we are honored to have you here. At this stage in my ministry with you here at Griffin, I'm not sure who might be a visitor and who might not be. So there is a little visitor's uh, paper card that we would like for you to fill out. If you would like to have one of these, our ushers will make sure you get it. There's someone here that's never filled one of these out? Okay, I believe we're probably all home folk and maybe somebody that's been here before, but we're glad that you're here. Now, the announcements are in the bulletin for you to read, to be at the right place at the right time. Now, you will have to not let me forget tonight, you've got a business conference. I saw that in the bulletin when I came in this morning, so please do not let me forget that. If you would do that, I would appreciate it because sometimes at my age, I do forget things from time to time. I want to thank you, and my wife wants to thank you, uh, for the wonderful meal 
that you gave in honor of, of us and Rick last week. It was absolutely delicious. The only regret that I have that I didn't have a plate large enough to get a little bit of everything. So, but I did take some home with me and I enjoyed it again last Sunday night. Thank you so much for that. Now, I'm gonna extend an invitation for you. Everybody here in this auditorium that's here. Now you have to be here in the auditorium to receive this invitation. I know those people on Facebook, what in the world is he gonna ask? I'm gonna ask every one of you to come to my house and eat. You know what you like, you bring it and we'll help you eat it. <laughs> now that takes care of that. Now I love you church. Pray for you this morning, ask God to bless you and ask you to meet every need that you have in your life and those on our prayer list, I prayed for them, ask God to bring healing to them as we did Wednesday night. Now, uh, I'm going to put in another plug for Kent. If you can sing, you need to be up here in this choir. Yes, amen. Amen. Got a few amens on that one. If you can sing at all, uh, you get up here in this choir and you sing. Use your voice for the glory of God. I would, but I can't sing. If I could sing, I, I would uh, certainly get up there in that choir and help out as well, even as your interim uh, pastor. <laughs> With that being said, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. We're going to pray for those on our prayer list that, excuse me, that we get from uh, week to week. We're going to pray for our ministries, and we're going to ask for unspoken requests. We do this every week. Signified by the raised hand. If you have an unspoken request all over the auditorium, we're going to ask God to meet that need as well. Join your heart with mine as we pray together. Our Heavenly Father, what a wonderful privilege it is to walk into the throne room of grace by way of Calvary, just to humble ourselves before your mighty hand on this beautiful Lord's day. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege to be here on this side of eternity, to worship you in spirit and in truth. I would ask today, Lord, that you would walk in and out of every pew, that you'd speak to every heart, and those listening by internet, Lord, I pray you'll speak to them. I pray, Lord, you'll bless them. And hopefully and prayerfully in the near future, they'll be able to come back to the house of God. I pray that you'd bless and heal those that are sick in body, those on our prayer list. These hands that were raised, they're important. God, you're not limited to time or space. You know exactly where they are and what they need. Today, Lord, I would ask that you'd reach down from heaven and touch them and bring healing to their bodies. Comfort those, Lord, who have lost loved ones. And I pray your divine will be in this service here today. Meet all of our needs together and we'll thank you for it as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Um, for those of you that may not have heard Robert just now, um, he is calling a deacon's meeting right after the service this morning. It's not in the bulletin. So as a reminder to those deacons that may or may not know, you have a meeting right after the service this morning. So, right? You're welcome. Okay, would you stand and join me in singing our, our hymn of praise this morning, Victory in Jesus, hymn 426 in your hymn books. I heard an old, old story, how a Savior came from glory. How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning Of his precious blood's atoning Then I repented of my sin And won the victory Oh, victory in Jesus my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with His redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew Him and all my love is due Him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing blood. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing, how he made the lame to walk again, and cause the blind to see. And then I cried, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. 
And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing blood. I heard about a mansion he had built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. About the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me and I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing blood. Amen. Would you, you may be seated. I'm going to do a couple of things this morning. One y'all know, one is new to me. But uh, first I'm going to tell you that dog song. It's kind of get my nerves out just a little bit. All right, I've got a little story I want to tell you right quick. Now I'm not calling anybody a turkey. I have to say that before I start. But a lot of times in life we're a lot like an old turkey. In Acts chapter 20, verse 29, says, For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. A lot of times in life, that old turkey will get out there walking away from the flock, and that's usually when he gets himself in some kind of trouble. Now, I can speak the same in my own life as a Christian. When I get away from God and get away from God's people, that's usually when I get myself in some kind of trouble. As that old turkey is walking out through the woods and scratching at leaves and picking at bugs and picking at seeds and gobbling along, Well, there's no blue tick hound off down there. Here's him off down there, he comes along chasing him. <coughs> now he's pushing him down through the holler, and there's a little beagle sitting on the ridge. And anybody that's ever been around a beagle knows if they hear another dog barking, they'll drive you crazy if you turn them loose. And that little beagle gets in there, that old blue tick. <coughs> and that old blue tick's chiming in every now and then. <coughs> well, they're pushing that old turkey right toward the set of railroad tracks. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, it says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil has a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. Now we all know that a long black train is the devil, and them dogs are pushing that turkey right toward that set of railroad tracks, and that old train's coming along. And right at the last minute, setting up the tree is an old owl. Now when we think about an owl, we think about wisdom, and I think about Romans chapter 16, verse 27, says, To God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Now if we'll just listen to God to start with, we won't get ourselves in the situations that we do, but if we'll, but if we'll always listen to him, he's always there to call us back. And from Gothenburg, Sweden, to Royston, Georgia, that's called the dog song. <laughs>
the grace God extends to me each day that I await. I feel so unworthy of His blessings I partake. When God looks down on me, it's not by sin He sees, but the precious blood of Jesus that cleansed and pardoned me. Father, forgive them, they heard my Savior cry. The ones who cried Hosanna were yelling crucify. The nails didn't hold him on that old rugged tree. This must stand the test of time throughout eternity. I let my mind drift back in time to that eventful day. Shame that he bore for us while he was on display. The tomb didn't hold him there, he arose in victory. Thank God the blood he shed that day still cleans and sets you free. Father, forgive them, they heard my Savior cry. The ones who cried Hosanna were yelling crucify. Nails didn't hold him on that old rugged tree. Was love stand the test of time throughout eternity? Was love stand the test of time throughout eternity? That song was written by my uncle Wallace Anderson. Mm -hmm. Amen. How many of you remember Rich Little, if I call the name Rich Little? He could imitate anybody. I think he's going to be another Rich Little. That's good. I enjoyed that. Thank you so much. Now, if you have your Bible, turn to John chapter 14. John 14 is where we're going to be at uh, this morning. In a few moments, I'm going to speak on this subject. Like Father like son. How many of you have a dad that you look like? God bless your daddy. <laughs> <laughs> that song, Victory in Jesus. I'm going to have it sung at my funeral. If I die before my wife, I said I want Victory in Jesus sung at my funeral. You sang one last week that I won't sing at my funeral because he lives. I want the whole congregation to, to sing it, and on the third verse, I want them to stand and sing. Then one day I'll cross that river and I'll fight life's final war with pain. That's going to come one day. You know, either going by the way of the grave or we'll be in the in in the rapture. So I told my wife, I said, now if I go before you, I want those two songs sung at my funeral. Now if you want a third one sung. You just do it. She said, oh, I do. I said, you do? She said, yeah, and I'm going to sing it. At my funeral, she said, yeah, that's what you're going to sing. She said, blessed in assurance, the money is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of spending divine. I said, boy, you sure know how to hurt a guy, don't you? There's a lot of men and boys that look alike. A dad and his son, the son and his father, they look, they look a lot alike. My oldest brother, Paul Jr., my daddy was Paul George Bowling. And my oldest brother was Paul Jr. He looked just like my daddy. And people told him, as long as you live, Paul will never die. Ironically, they died four months apart. Isn't that something? Now, a lot of boys look like their daddies, and a lot of them act like their daddies. They don't necessarily look like them, but they do act like them. My mother told me one time, she said, boy, you're just like your daddy. Didn't say I look like him. I said, what do you mean? She said, hard-headed and stubborn. You know, so I, so I, I got that title passed on down to me to be hard-headed and stubborn. So boys look like their daddy. Sometimes little girls look like their mothers. How about you? Uh, you girls, all you ladies in here, any of you look like your mother? A lot of you do. Some of them, you know, they say that they're the spitting image uh, of their dad or their mother. But this morning, as we delve into this message, we're going to find out that Jesus is just like his father. Isn't that something? 
He's identical to him. Uh, the other day I, I quoted some scripture from, from John 14, 1, Let not your heart be troubled. But if you go a little bit further on down there, Jesus says in John 14, also he said, uh, I am, I like that, I am. Remember when Moses said, who, who do I say has sent me? He said, just tell him I am. That's all you got to do. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody can come to my Father except they come through me, except by me. Folks, I want to tell you something. He's not a way. He is the way. A lot of people say that there are many ways to heaven. Now, what is the Greek word for that? Hogwash. Somebody remember. Now, you got to, I'll ask you that from time to time. What is the Greek word for something that is nonsense? And you come back and tell me hogwash. Don't you forget that, okay, church? All right, what's going on in America today? There's a Greek word for it. Hogwash. That's exactly right. Would you stand with me? Let's honor the reading of God's Word together. Starting in verse 7 is where we're going to pick it up. And we're going to go through verse 15. Jesus said, If you had known me, you should have known my Father also, and from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father. And it will be sufficient unto us. It will suffice that. Now, isn't that something? Show us the Father. Jesus has been sent from the Father to do the work of the Father and demonstrate the love of the Father toward all mankind. And he said, well, we want to see him. Now, that would be impossible at this point in his life. Now, listen how Jesus comes back with, with, with the answer. Jesus said unto him, have I, have I been so long time with you, and yet has thou not known me, Philip? But he that has seen me has seen the Father, and now how thou sayest, then show us the Father. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, and the words that I speak unto you I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very word's sake. Verily, verily, or that means truly, Truly, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to the Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye, if ye shall ask anything in my name, I'll do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. Pray with me. Father, these are your infallible, holy, inspired, inerrant words. We're here, Father, to proclaim them and rightly divide them. How I pray that they will find their lodging place in every heart that is here. That you'll speak to us, you'll challenge us, you'll stretch us. And Father, we'll become more like Jesus every day that we live because it's in his name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. Like father, like son. Philip had a question. Show us the father. And Jesus says, Philip, I've been with you a pretty good while. Do you not recognize the father in me is basically what he was saying. If you've seen me, you have seen him. He is the creator of all mankind. He is the creator of the entire universe. And I'm going to get into that because I'm going to use different names of God here in just a moment. So first of all, I want you to notice the request, and that's in verse 7 and 8. Let's pick it up again. If you had known me, you should have known my Father also, and from henceforth you know him, and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it will suffice us. Show it. This is the request. Philip is making a request to Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Will you show us the Father? Now, see, Jesus came to this earth to demonstrate everything that the Father sent him to do. Everything that I do, it is to benefit and please the heavenly Father. He has sent me here on a mission. I'm on a mission to do something. Primarily, it was to seek and to save that which was lost. And you know what, church? That was me. That was you. If you're born again, he, he came here looking for you to seek and to save 
that which was lost. Remember when Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden and God came looking for them? He asked a question. He said, Adam, where are you? Now God knew exactly where Adam was. He knew exactly what bush, what tree, whatever it was he was behind. He knew exactly where he was. You know what God was wanting? A confession. Where are you? You tell me where you are and what condition that you are in. God knew already. He knew that he had sinned. He was naked and ran and hid from God. And he went already sinning and passing the buck. Why did you do it? It wasn't my fault. It was the woman you gave me. She said, it wasn't my fault. It was the serpent that came along. Everybody wants to pass the buck. Nobody wants to take responsibility for our sins on this side of eternity. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. Now let's look at the request. First of all, we're going to look at God as Elohim. That's E-L-O-H-I-M for those of you who are taking it. He is the, that literally means Elohim, the God of creation. God did the creating. Now, now, now Jesus is going to break it down and let them know and understand who God really is. I'm God. I'm God in the flesh. Now, now let me pause a moment and say this. No Old Testament prophet, no New Testament apostle, not Billy Graham or Billy Sunday or R.G. Lee or Mike Bowling can die for the sins of mankind. Only God Almighty could die for the sins of mankind. Therefore, Jesus is God. You've got God the Father, you've got God the Son, you've got God the Holy Spirit, and the three of them are one. Elohim means the God of creation. He created all things. And if you go back and read in the Scriptures, and I did in John chapter 1, you remember that? In the beginning was the Word. Word, and the Word was Jesus. All things were created for Him and by Him, according to the Scriptures. We were there together when it took place, and God created. Now, now folks, listen to me. God spoke something from nothing. He hung this world out in space. It's not hanging by, by some rope or, or, or something. It's got magnetism within itself. It's got different poles, yes. But I want to tell you something. God spoke it into existence. In the beginning, God did the creating. And then when he got ready to make man, he looks at the, the Son and the Holy Ghost and he says, let's do it in our image. Let us. Let us together make him in our image. So God, Elohim, means the God of creation. Now God, with his uh, um, omniscient in his purpose. God is omniscient in his purpose. Now God has a purpose for you. God has a purpose for you. God has a purpose for you and for you and for me. Did you know that? We're, we're not here just to take up space. God got us here for a reason and a purpose. That is to know Him and to fellowship with Him with Him, and do the work that He has set before us to do. And that's one of the largest problems in our churches today is the churches have failed to do the work that God ordained us to do, set us apart to do. You know what the greatest ministry in every church is? Evangelism. God wants us to evangelize. You, you, you see, we, we are to... Uh, uh, Equip the saints. You know, that, that's the job of the pastor and the teachers is to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. And then we go out and evangelize the law. See, we're supposed to do that on a daily basis. Every day that we live, wherever we go, whomever we come in contact with. You see, he is Elohim, the God of creation. In his omniscient, we see it in his purpose. He is omnipotent in his power. You see, it took power to, to set the world in motion, to put it on its axis and to let it turn and spin. Isn't it an amazing? Well, we, we get up in the morning and say, well, the sun is rising. The sun's always been there. The earth is turning. But that's our terminology, and we know it that way. In the evening, we say, well, the sun is setting, and it does. It, it looks like it's, it's going down out there. And God is so powerful. Folks, I want to tell you something. We, we had the atom bomb. Remember that back in World War II? And... Uh, and, and President Truman had to use them on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Remember that? He had to do something to, to stop this and, and, and to get it over with, you know. And, and, and I'm praying that God would use divine power, divine intervention to stop what's going on now. Amen. Folks, I want to tell you something. We need to pray like we've never prayed before. 
We, we need to get in tune with God. Folks, I, I want you to read your Bible every day. Now, some of you probably do. You probably read it more than I do. That's okay. But those of you that, that, that hadn't been reading as much as you should, I want to encourage you every day to, to take time. If you go to work, get up a, maybe 10 minutes early and have a little time of devotion or do it in the evening before you go to bed and, and pray and say, say, God, I want you to speak to my heart. God, I, I want you to challenge me to be more like Jesus because Jesus is more like you. And I want to be just like him in all that I do. We, we see that Elohim in his omniscience and his omnipotence and now in his omnipresence in his person. You see, God is everywhere you go. What did David say about it? The heavens do what? Declare the glory of God. What's Preacher Mike doing up here this morning? Declaring the word of God. I'm here to rightly divide it. I'm here to preach it. I'm, I'm here to uh, exegete the scriptures. I'm, I'm, I'm here to, uh, to bring light into what God has written through the message that, that God laid on my heart to preach here uh, today. But I, I want you to know that God is present in His person. The heavens declare the glory of God. And when you go out there and look at the trees, the firmament showeth His handiwork. That's God displaying Himself all around us. Folks, you can't go anywhere without seeing or noticing God uh, in, in, in the environment that you and I uh, live in. That's the kind of God He is. He wants to introduce Himself to us. So God wanted to introduce Himself to us by the way of His Son who come to this earth. You see, Jesus was born of a virgin. And if you don't believe the virgin birth, you might as well take it out of the Bible or throw the Bible away. You see, it was a virgin birth. He, he prophesied in the Old Testament that he was going to be born of a virgin. He prophesied where, where it was going to be born, where it was going to take place in a little town called Bethlehem. You see, God does everything with pinpoint accuracy. Now, the only thing left in God's calendar to do is rapture the church out of here. Everything has been fulfilled. Nothing else has to do that. A fellow told me one time that there was an old preacher uh, getting ready to preach, and it was uh, back in... Uh, it, it was May the 14th, 1948. He said, God doesn't have to do anything else now. Something happened May the 14th, 1948. If you read Matthew chapter 24, you'll read where the fig tree blossomed. Yeah. Israel became a nation again. Overnight, in one day, he prophesied that it would happen. And it did happen. It took place. He said, God has done it. Fulfilled. Now, you know what Jesus said about that generation born from now? I was born in 1950. I was close, but everybody born from 1948 until now, and some of you were born before that or prior to that. But listen, he said, this generation won't pass until all these signs are fulfilled. Folks, I want to tell you something. We're part of that generation. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, we're, we're on the verge. We're on the verge of Jesus Christ coming back. Uh, and and he's going, there's going to be a shout. There's going to be a trump of God and the shout of God. You know what's going to happen? The shout's going to be so loud it's going to wake the dead. The dead in Christ is going to rise first. You and I who are alive and remain are going to be caught up together with them in the air. And the Bible says we shall ever be with the Lord together. Comfort you one another with these words. What an awesome God we serve. Yes. Out of His creation, His purpose, His power, and His purpose. That, that's kind of, all that just from a request. You know, you ask God something. I want to tell you something. Sometimes God may be a little bit silent on doing something, but yet He's still speaking. Have you ever asked God something for something you wanted it right then and there? One of the greatest messages I have ever heard in my entire life, I was 17 years old. Bill Brule, my pastor, I was called to preach under. Preached a, mass, a message titled this right here, Hip Pocket God. And every time you want your handkerchief, is you pull it out only when you need it. Am I right? Ladies, you get that Kleenex out only when you need it. You know, otherwise we leave it where it is and we don't fool with it anymore. So he preached that message, Hip Pocket God. We only pull God out when we need him. What, what, what are the words that come out of our mouth when we're in trouble? Oh, God, help me. God, help me. I need help. I'm sick. I need, I need healing to my body. Folks, if you're a born-again Christian and you die in that disease or that condition, you are completely healed. Amen. All right. So, first of all, we see the request. Let, let, let me say this right here. Pray to God. Make your request known to Him. The Bible says, make them, don't hold them in. God knows it anyway, but talk to him. God wants his children to talk to him. My daddy wanted a conversation with me. He called me the old man, even when I was a little boy. That was my nickname. Old man, he's had to go to school today. What did you do? When I got me a first job and ready to go to work, you know what he told me? Listen, words of wisdom. He said, that man owns a company, not you. You do what he tells you to do. Words of wisdom. Let's look at the request. Now let's look at the reply. 
Jesus is going to answer the request. Folks, I want to tell you something. You talk to him, he'll answer you one way or the other. So the request or the reply comes from verses 9 through 11. Jesus said to him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father, and thou sayest then, Show us the Father. I'll just stop right there and need to read them all because we've already read them. So he is giving him a reply. In verse 9, we see truth stated. Truth stated. Jesus is stating the truth. I am the way, in that prior verse, the truth and the life. That's me. Truth is a person. The person is the Lord Jesus Christ. Folks, I want to tell you something. He's the only one that's, that's lived a perfect sinless life upon this earth. The only one. The only one to do it. A perfect sinless life. And he did that and set example for you and me. That we're to follow in his footsteps. That Galilean who walked the shores of Galilee. And he saw two fishermen there mending their nets. What are you doing? We're mending our nets. We're fishermen. We are living this way. This is how we feed our families. We, we catch the fish and we take them to the market. And we, we sell our fish. He said, that's good. You know what, he, well, what else he said? He didn't stop there. He said, come and follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. If you'll just follow me. You know, in, in other words, folks, God, God wants us to be fishers of men. Here, here's what he wants us to do. He wants us to go catch them and he'll clean them. Amen? God will take care of that. So the truth is stated. Jesus said, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you the truth. That's why I believe with all my heart. I wouldn't preach this book if it wasn't the infallible, holy, inspired, inerrant word of God. I wouldn't preach it. I wouldn't get in the pulpit and preach it. And I don't know why some of these liberal preachers do that. They may be listening by internet, but that's okay. Just let them swallow. It might be a hard pill to swallow, but let them swallow. Folks, this is the word of God. Amen? Amen. There's no substitute for the word of God. So Jesus, is, him being God, the author of this book, gives them truth. Now we only see truth stated, but look at truth supported. Look in verse 10. Believest thou not that I am in the Father? And the Father in me, the words that I speak to you, I speak of myself, not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He does the work. It's supported. It's supported by the Father. He is behind me all the way. You ever, you ever told your children, I'm going to support you? I'm going to support you in your schoolwork, in your job, wherever you go. You know who we need to support? And I was looking at the pictures back here in the hallway this morning when I come in. We mentioned the names Wednesday night in prayer. Those that are in the military. We need to support them. Oh, it's not like it used to be. The military has changed a lot. They get into this stuff called woke. Read the Bible and you'll awake. Amen? That's all you got to do. Supported. Jesus is supporting the truth of the Father. The Father is truthful in all that he does. And he says, I'm here to support everything for him through me. So if you've seen me, you've seen him in action. So that, that, that's what he's talking about. That's my third point. The Father in action through the Son, verse 11. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works sake. In other words, you're watching me perform what the Father is doing through me. I, I'm, I'm causing the blind to see. I'm causing the lame to walk. The deaf to hear. I've even raised the... Dead back to life. I saw a sign one time in this place of business that if you don't believe the dead comes back to life, you'll be here at 4 o'clock. Now, come on, church. I know you got that. <laughs> I heard a story one time. A church was so dead that a man died of a heart attack in the service. When the ambulance driver got there, they took out 15 people before they got to the right one. <laughs> Now, that's a dead church. The reply, true stated, true supported, and the Father in action through the Son. Thirdly and lastly, let's look at the results. What is the result of this? What happens when you get saved? You ever thought about it? What really happens when you get saved? Well, I've asked God to save me, and I've been saved. Now, I can go and live any way I want to. There's a Greek word for that. Oh. Gosh, you can't do that. You've been bought with a price. You better act and live as if though you've been saved. Others need to see. I was talking about action. I, I, I talked a little bit about the Father in action through the Son. Well, that's the same thing it is. It's the, it's the Son's action through us. 
You see, Jesus is our elder brother. Did you know that? I heard a story one time where, where this man come and he was going to rob this house. He was dressed all in black and he had a hood on and he, he come into the house and nobody was there. There's no parrot sitting on a big stand sitting out there. And that robber come in, he was getting this, that, and the other. And the old parrot said, Jesus is going to get you for that. Jesus is going to get you for that. He just kept getting stuff and he kept looking, you know. He was a little uh, mesmerized and he just kept getting. The more he got, the more he heard, Rawr! Jesus is going to get you for that. Jesus is going to get you for that. So he got a little bit more and old parrot said it again. Jesus is going to get you for that. Well, he, he got so curious he turned the light on. And there was that parrot sitting on that stand and a Doberman pincher looking him right in the face and the parrot said, Sick him, Jesus. <laughs> What kind of results are you looking for? Action? I mean, are you doing anything to benefit the kingdom of God? Now, folks, we're going to have to give an account to God one day. Can you imagine? There's going to be uh, two judgments. Now, let me say this, and listen to me very carefully. Everybody look at Preacher Mike. Everybody look right at me. I'm going to tell you something. Listen to me very carefully. White throne judgment. If you appear before the right white throne judgment, you can hang it up. You're going to hell. But if you appear before the judgment seat of Christ, what we call the Bema seat, you'll just give an account for the things done in the life and you're going to heaven. Do you know the difference between religion and Christianity? Religion is man seeking God. Christianity is God seeking man. I come to seek and to save that which was lost. So let's look at the results, verses 12 through 15. Here it is. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, listen, and greater works than these shall he do because I go to my Father. Let me stop here for just a moment. Did you ever read in the Bible, in Jesus' ministry, in the Synoptic Gospels, where Jesus walked by and his shadow healed somebody? No. He spoke it. He's God, and we know that. But it does say that Peter did. It does say that greater works, he said, look, he said, greater works than these shall you do because I go to my Father. And whatsoever you ask in my name, that I will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And if you ask anything in my name, that will I do. Here we go. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. What has he commanded us to do? Go ye therefore in all the world and preach the gospel. Baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Therefore I will be with you always. Lo, I will be with you always, even unto the end of the age. Well, in verse 12 we see great works. Great works. He, he, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, to he that believeth on me, the works that I do, you shall do also, and greater. So he said, the results is that you're going to do greater works if you'll get in tune with me. If you act like me because I act like my father, you can go out and do the works that I do. You can preach the gospel. You can share the gospel. You can tell everybody you're a Christian. Your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. You have been born again. And when you die, you're going to go to heaven. Folks, it's that simple. But I want to tell you something. Leading and living a Christian life is not easy. Amen? Amen. It is not easy. It is hard and it's difficult. He said, look at the results. Great works. Number two, effective prayer, verses 13 and 14. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, and my Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I'll do it. I'll do it. But you've got to be right with God. You've got to be walking with God. You've got to have a clean slate. You've got to let people know that you've been born again. And you've got to live it. In other words, they see it. You know... Uh, if they look at our life and see our life, actions speak louder than words sometimes, folks. Did you know that? And lastly, and I'm through, you've got to have a consecrated love, or the results will be a consecrated uh, love. In verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep them. If you love me, do you love Jesus today, church? I believe you do. I believe you love Jesus. Are any of us in this room perfect? Not by a long shot. No, not by a long shot. Like father, like son. Jesus explained to them, you know, if you've seen me, you've seen him. He's here. He's here in the spirit. He's here. He's omnipresent he, in person. He is all over the place. Wherever you go, you see the fingerprint of God 
Tonight I'm going to preach a message called The Signature of God. Don't miss it. Come back. The Signature of God. When you buy something, you put your signature on it. God put his signature on this. If you love me, keep my commandments. Philip, look at me. Philip, take a good look. Don't miss it, Philip. Don't miss it. Take a good look. Do you see him? You know, you wonder, I told you to use the sanct your sanctified imagination when you read the Bible. I wonder what else was said between the two of them. I wonder if maybe at one point Jesus says, Philip, let me just take you aside. Let me explain some things to you that I, I really didn't fully explain here when everybody was listening. I want, you to, I want you to get the message. Did you know Jesus, out of all his 12, he still had an inner circle of the 12? You remember the Mount of Transfiguration? Peter, James, and John went up there with him. Not all of them. He had those that he could, he could trust a little bit more. He could, he could put more time in them. Put more trust in them. God wants to do that to all of us. God wants to get his message across so that we can take this message to a lost and dying world. Where is our world? Right out here. Your street, where you live, schools that you go to. He's, he's right in the, I, I, our world is right out here. And God says, I want you to go and do it. Share it to the best of your ability. I'm going to share this last story and I'm through. I was invited to go and speak on Veterans Day to Powdersville High School. They had never had a Veterans Day ceremony. I guess I was their first invited speaker uh, to come over there. And I talked to them. They had some uh, older gentlemen in their 80s in their Marine uniforms. And they had all the men in the military, the ex-military, the veterans sitting behind me. And boy, I was, I was proud to stand there with them in all branches of service that were sitting behind me. Boy, I, did, I felt like a million dollars with that protection there behind me. I felt, I felt secure. And I got up there and I, and I shared basically the gospel. I shared my testimony, some things that happened to me when I was in Vietnam and different things and so on and so forth. And then at the end of the message, I said, you know something? These men and others just like them and women fought for our freedom. They fought for our freedom. We're free in this country to share the gospel, to live a life the best that we possibly can to please Him. And I said, I had an opportunity one time to visit New York. Stood on one of the Twin Towers. Did that. But we got on a little boat. And we rode out to Ellis Island. The closer I got, the more the tears swelled up in my eyes as I saw that lady standing there with that torch. Give me your tired, your hungry, your huddled masses. Bring them on in. The right way. Bring them in. And I began to I said, but I'm going to tell you something. That was powerful and that was strong. And I was, I was speaking to a packed place there in that, in that gym. I said, but let me tell you something. Just outside of Jerusalem, there's a place called Golgotha. There stood the true Statue of Liberty. Where Jesus Christ, the Son of God, He hung there in shame. He died for all the sins of mankind. He shed His blood. They buried Him, and on the third day, He rose again. My daughter watched it on the Internet. She was on her job, and she was watching it. She said, Daddy, it's a wonder if they don't lock you up for saying something like that in the school system. I said, then so be it. Then so be it. I used to have a little card. When I'd go and visit, I'd leave my card. It had my name, the church name, phone numbers on there. I had Romans 1.16 on. Didn't have it printed. Didn't have to look it up. Apostle Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power unto God, uh, it's the power unto God through salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Would you stand with me? Every head bowed, every eye closed. I'm going to ask you a question. Nobody looking around. Are you saved? Do you really know you're saved beyond the shadow of a doubt? Or are you going through motions? If you died today, would you go to heaven? Would you be there in the presence of God and His holy angels? Would you? Listen, this is the most important part of the service. 
We've sung. We'll be taking offering as you go out, as you come in. We've preached. But now it's the most important part. It's an invitation now is being given. God's inviting you and me to make decisions that has eternal ramifications written all over it. If you're lost, God wants to save you. If you're looking for a church home, the doors of this church are open. If you want to be baptized and you've already been saved and hadn't fallen on the right side of your salvation, you need to come and be baptized. Whatever it is God's laid on your heart to do, use this altar, whatever. Obey it. Just obey the call of God on your heart. Heavenly Father, I bow to ask for holy boldness once again, Lord, on this side of eternity. I pray, Lord, that whatever need here any individual has, I pray you'll meet that need today before we leave this building. Have your willing way now in this invitation. And I'll thank you by faith for what you're about to do as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Kent? Share those things in your heart. Our nation needs prayer. This church needs prayer. This pastor needs prayer. Let me encourage you to be faithful in all that you do so that the Heavenly Father will bless you through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit of God will not be grieved in what you do. I hope you'll be back tonight. Six o'clock, come. I'm going to preach on the signature of God. Don't miss it. Come on back. Be here every service. And do your very best. And those that, that are sick in body, pray for them, encourage them to the lost. And I'm going to be uh, getting uh, people to help me go and talk to, or at least call, those that are shut in. I want to encourage them because they can't get here like they used to. It could be one of us someday. We'll want somebody to encourage them. So help me in all those areas, church, and I'm going to be praying for you. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for our time together. Thank you, Lord, that we can meet in this building once again on this side of the I pray, Heavenly Father, you will dismiss us with your love and your